What's going on guys, welcome back to Season 3 of my Montreal Canadiens Franchise Mode series. If you guys missed the last episode, go and watch that one quick. As I'm about to spoil what happened, so if you haven't watched that one yet, go and do it quick. If you have, then you know you are looking at the current Stanley Cup champions. Honestly, I still can't believe we won the Stanley Cup last season. I didn't, you know, I thought we had a chance, but I think our team was quite that good. Again, someone needs some proof they missed the last episode. There you go, Stanley Cup champions, Montreal Canadiens. Um, Cam Fowler, you might see us three points right now in one preseason game, so... Hopefully a sign of good things to come. But you guys will look here at the lines heading into this season. Team stats are was contender. Going with all speed and skill on the first line. We got Duran, Barzell, and Caulfield. Honestly, I'm hoping for some big things. They're getting plus one, which isn't too bad. Really fast, really skilled. Should be a sick line. Second line there, we got Suzuki, Thomas, and Gallagher. Uh, we actually made the trade for Robert Thomas after Max Jones went back to Arizona. Um, he was signed the off sheet with them. I didn't even realize who at the time, but I feel like Arizona just wanted, you know, revenge after we kind of beat them. The Domi for Galchenyuk trade. They're like, you know what? We'll just... Offer sheet, Domi, screw them over. Uh, Paling there, Dano, and Tatar on the third line, I think is real solid. Houdon, Helm, and Lekin, it should be a decent fourth line. Defensively there, Subban, Weber, sick top pair. 89s plus three, so they're playing like 92s. Polak, Fowler, Mete, Juleson. Uh, goaltending there, you got Price, the starter. Brossois back backing him up. Price, 85 overall now, still making 10.5 or 5 more years. Like we were saying, trade Price. I'm definitely going to try and do that, but we just want a cup. I'm willing to like start the season off, see how we do before you know we make a big change like that. Um, also, to may trade Subban just because he's 89, um, 32 years old, making $9 million for one more year, so he might not resign with us. And he's got max trade value right now, which is kind of insane, so we could get back a huge return. Also, I'll show you guys these special teams really quick. I'm not actually sure if these are going to be final. Uh, yeah, I don't think actually it's saved what I did last time, so I'll have to change these up, but honestly, we should be pretty good in terms of that. We have a lot of skilled players. Also, I'll give you guys a look at the AHL team. Again, the first line there, Dalakal, Howerluck, and Batan's pretty sick. We signed like all three in free agency. The one in here, a lot of people are saying is going to get good. We actually, I think, tried to trade him for Suter, didn't go through. So, going to hold on to him, and uh, hopefully, you know, that is the case. Carlson there had a lot of growth. Trevor Moore playing on that line, you know, should help those guys grow. Clark here, of course, we drafted first overall. French defenseman, franchise potential. So, uh, if I use NHL, but only a 78, maybe that'll be good for him. Uh, playing his first season in the AHL, plus he's got Bodwin there on the top pair. I feel like those guys can carry it up. And then, of course, we have Primo here, 22 years old, 79 overall. For sure, he's going to be a backup. I'm really hoping he actually turns into a starter. Uh, maybe he can take over Carey Price. I mean, he's got like four years left to grow. If he does well in the AHL, there's no reason why he can't be, you know, 85 to an 87. I feel like he definitely has that potential. Yeah, potential, guys. I wanted to show you the assets we have on this team right now. So, as I mentioned before, Subhan there, max trade value, which makes no sense. 32 years old, 89 overall, is a good defenseman. $9 million is about, I guess, at 89 overall, it's about, you know, what you expect. But an expiring deal when you're left, how's he have the same value there as Clark? First overall. Francis defense, but it makes no sense. So I feel like we need to trade Subban just based on the fact that he's kind of overvalued right now, and we could get like a young defenseman who's almost as high rated, better contract to build our team around for the future. Um, Barzell, Cotton as well, both have a ton of value. Draft picks, of course. We still have Arizona's first round pick, so should be able you know, to have a good round of picks there in 2022. Um, also, too, I actually want to show you guys the coach. Um, I think I mentioned before, but like we have a very good coach, and I think that's you know probably helping us play so well. Um, as you can see there, overall A. Staff chemistry only 65%, so that's a bit concerning. Uh, if we're not playing too well, definitely look to make a change. But if you look at the stats, like A+, plus, A+, plus, A+, plus, only B teaching, but that's okay. Like everything there, A+, plus is probably the best coach I've had so far in franchise. We guess, you know, makes sense for Montreal Canadiens. We have a pretty big budget there. So, you know, optimistic here. Are we going to win back-to-back -back cups? Probably not, but there's really no reason why we shouldn't be back in the playoffs. I'll show you guys the ratings here. So, 92 offense and defense and 84 goaltending. I would say it's pretty solid. So we'll get started with the sim again. If I notice anything crazy, like a seven game losing streak, or you know, we're just not playing too well, definitely I'll try to make a change before it gets out of hand. But um, I'm kind of just fine sticking with this team for now and seeing how they do. And we just got Trevor here, guys, from the Calgary Flames. Wanna give us Hyman a fifth round pick for our first. He's making almost six million dollars, so I feel like he's gone up, gone up in rating, otherwise that's just a bad contract. 84, so I mean it's not bad. I'd still say it's a bit too expensive though. Uh, for his rating. We've got about a week left here until we're in December. I think we're currently first in the Atlantic Division. The division's actually kind of flip-flopped. Like you got Canadians, Red Wings, and Panthers there at the top. Um, Maple Leafs, Bruins, and Lightning are all at the bottom somehow. So we're 18, 8, and 1. I'm not sure why, you know, Lightning got so much worse. They had a stack team. We played them in the playoffs. Duran there killing it. 32 points on that skilled line with Barzell and Caulfield. And yeah, look at that. Lightning, Bruins, Maple Leafs. Literally the three best teams right now are the bottom three. Um, Lightning are the worst as well at 22 points. Um, I have to go look at their lines because if they haven't gotten any worse, then that just makes absolutely no sense. But of course, you know, should make our road back to the Stanley Cup final a bit easier. Um, okay, so looking at it here, 
maybe they lost like one forward, but the top nine's pretty much the same. Uh, defensively, okay, they did lose. They have Hedman, Sergeyev, McDonough still. They lost everybody else. Just a few 79s. Still a Vasilevsky though. Like, this does not look like the worst team in the Atlantic. Also, guys, as you can see here, Subban does want to resign with us, but he's asking for quite a bit. Ten and a half million there for four years. Pay him until he's 36. And I mean, I don't really trust him to keep that rating. And like I mentioned before, he's kind of overvalued right now. He did actually have max trade value, but because he's on an expiring deal, it slowly decreases over the season. So now it's just under the max. So I'm thinking I'm going to try and trade him right now as at the deadline, you know, he could be, say, equal with Kotler or whatever, which that little bit might, you know, change a deal for us. Maybe we have to add an extra pick who otherwise wouldn't have. Also, Clark there first overall is now an 80. So um, even if we don't get defenseman back, we just call Clark up from the AHL. Although I would prefer to leave him there for the first year. Hopefully we get somebody back. So I'm gonna go look for something crazy because obviously we're, we're shopping a lot of value there and we need to get a nice return. All right guys, so we're gonna check a big trade at the Calgary Flames offering them Subban for Giordano, who's actually on the block, 38 years old, but he's still 88 overall. Also he's left-handed, so I think he could pair up really nice with Weber on expiring deal as well. So basically, you know, we're not losing much there. Subban's an 89, Giordano's an 88, one overall down, but we're picking up Lindholm, who's 86 overall on a really good contract as well, 4.8 for the next three years and a second round pick. So pretty much getting Lindholm in a second for free there since we weren't gonna resign Subban anyway. We can lose Giordano for free and it's fine. Two of the three things are on the block. I think even with this, like the value is still on a bit on our side. I'd be fine even taking a second off or only getting a third. So see what the Calgary Flames say here. They're also rebuilders. That'd be awesome for the seconds, you know, an early second. But here we go, we'll see what they say. Trades rejected, the value is just a bit low. Wow, okay, so I do want one of their seconds rather than change it to a third. What if I add like a third of ours next year? Maybe this gets it done. And trade's accepted. I think that's an awesome trade for us. That's the trade, guys. The team is looking real solid. The first line I haven't touched is Coughlin. I'm hoping we'll actually win the call. There currently has 25 points, 27 games. Lindholm now in the second line with Thomas Gallagher. Third line's now Tatar, Janot, and Suzuki. I've also got Paling playing forward line center, so tons of depth. Defense looks pretty much just as good as well. Giordano and Weber both get plus three, so that's huge. Um, again, I think that's a great, really good trade for us. We still have a decent amount of cap room. Hopefully it works out. I'm just going to trade off here, guys, from the Blue Jackets. Sod and Borgstrand, both on expiring deals for two seconds. And Peterson, I mean, definitely would probably add some forward depth to us. But, I mean, I don't know. They'd have to be pretty good to make this worth it. Yeah, Sod 83. So, he's honestly like a fourth liner. Borgstrand as well. I'd rather just keep the picks. And a pretty big trade just went down between Carolina and Edmonton. Edmonton gets Stranges and Grubauer in exchange for Clefbaum in a third. I don't really like that trade for Edmonton, not gonna lie, but I actually did see Carolina had like five 80 plus goalies, so very good trade for them. Right after that, New Jersey gets Dumoulin in a third from Pittsburgh in exchange for Schnarr a second and a fifth. Pretty decent trade. And Edmonton just made another trade. This one actually, they definitely win. They get Bergen from Detroit with a fourth for Gagne in a third. Uh, if Detroit did this deal in real life, I'd be so pissed. Check this out. Pretty big off here from the Sharks. Want to give us Hurdle for Bodwin, a second and a fourth. Um, Hurdle's definitely a solid player. I don't really know if I'd like giving up Bodwin, but I might circle back here when I'm looking at everything. I see Burns on the block for them as well. What's he got? 31 points, 58 games, 85 overall. Could play center, could play wing. Uh, he'd be a nice addition, but I feel like our forwards are probably good enough unless, you know, the price is right on him. And now Rangers are trying to give us Strom and Buchnevich for a first, a second, quick. Again, we already have enough forward depth. I feel like giving up those picks for, you know, something we already have doesn't make a lot of sense. So hey, about a week here now to the deadline. I assume there'll be a bunch more coming in. Currently first in the division there. Panthers, I think, just tied us. Um, we got Chenyuk, Russ, Belmare, Bodwin a first and a second. Bringing Galchenyuk back to the Canadians would be kind of cool, but again, I feel like we have enough forward depth. If anything, maybe I'd want to like bring in a defenseman for the bottom pair. Maybe a better backup goalie than Brassois, even though it's probably not worth it. Um, LA trades Peterson in a second to Calgary for Zach Hyman. That's very interesting. I actually noticed he was their starting goaltender, 82. Quick was down to 81. Uh, Gauthier. How good is Gauthier? I'm just kind of curious. 26, 77. Yeah, so even though he's cheap, we don't need him at all. Not really worth the roster spot, unfortunately. So... There we go, one against Tampa at the deadline here, 38, 20, and five. Tied with the Panthers, 81 points. Now they do have a game in hand, but we're playing really well, cannot complain. Uh, Duran there, over point per game, 68. So I think that first line is working. Again, uh, we made our big trade already, you know, trading Subban. Ooh, team stats hopeful. That's not good. What, uh, we were still a contender after the Giordano Lindholm trade, because like our forwards got better. I'm guessing, oh, there it is. Giordano's down from an 88 to an 86. Unfortunately, but with the plus three, he should still be playing well. Again, he's a rental too, putting up a decent amount of points. 
Um, yeah, so maybe we'll bring in someone who's a bit better than Mete or Juleson, but when you look at our offense, like, again, they'd have to be, like, of 84 to crack our top nine, so... Unless there's like an 80 that's a really good two-way guy to play on the fourth line. Probably not worth it. So like I was saying, guys, I was looking to add a defenseman. I found the perfect one in Ryan Murray, currently on the block with the Columbus Blue Jackets, making 4.6 for the next five years. Very good contract for 85 overall D-man. Right now, honestly, he's probably just a really good bomb pair guy for us. But when Giordano would let go this summer, either him or Fowler would be on the top pair. And of course, you know, he'd for sure be in our top four. But it help us out huge right now in the playoffs. And then of course, down the road. And I'm offering them a 2023 first round pick as well as Noah Juleson. Obviously, bringing Murray in, we don't need him. And we have Clark in the AHL, who's hopefully going to become a stud. So, value's pretty equal. We'll see what Columbus says here. Trades rejected. Um, I thought, you know, that was a pretty good offer. Maybe we can add something small here, make it go through. So, I like this Hedekin guy, 1958, low top six. Maybe that's enough to just kind of push it over the edge. And trades accepted, I think that's a huge trade for us. So getting Murray is the only trade I'm making at the deadlines. I feel like our team's good enough. You look at the forward depth here. I mean, Paling, 83 on the fourth line. That should tell you all you need to know. Defensively as well, like, we're really good. Even with Deer down, down to 86. He's still getting plus three. Uh, Murray's actually on the second pair of Pollock because he gets plus three. So those guys playing like 88. Fowler there, you can see, would only get plus one. Now the one concern, Price is down to an 84. His stats aren't that bad. 0.906, 2.7. Like... They're not that bad. He just keeps dropping. So at 85, he had like okay amount of value. Now at 84, I mean, it's not like a sliver of value, but there's not a lot there. Maybe like a third, potentially a second round pick amount. But with his contract, like after this year, it'll be four years left at 10.5. I'm going to consider buying him out because, I mean, obviously we'll try and trade him first, but it's got a lot of money there going towards the starter. And we could probably buy him out and get a starter high rated for like a bit cheaper and actually still be saving money. So. Unless he has some, you know, crazy playoff where he bounces back up in rating. Um, I think that's like our only option. And so we're now at the end of the season here, guys. Finished with 102 points, 47, 27, 8 record. Was actually good for first in the Atlantic Division. So we have a shot here at the back-to-back -back cups. Who knows what happened? And Duran actually finished just over point per game, 83 there in 82. So uh, pretty crazy, I'd say, to say the least. I feel like we're a team that's really good, you know, up and down the lineup. Uh, so we'll take a look here at just how everyone did this year. Uh, Barzell 70 so again a lot of people said you know he didn't sim too well we get like 55 points I think I'm pretty happy with 70 now minus three is a little concerning Weber there 67 at 36 years old he's playing like the best hockey of his career obviously locked up still for what five more years I, I, we needed that to happen Caulfield there 66 points 34 goals I feel like he's got a really good shot of winning that call there's actually up to an 84 which is awesome to see Lindholm at 60 Gallagher 58 same with Thomas uh, I think that's enough probably Thomas can see some growth this summer Giordano there, 55, isn't too bad. Tatar, 43. Deneau, 41. Um, so yeah, like we're getting scoring pretty much all throughout the lineup. Now, Price's numbers here. Solid record, a .905, a 2.73. So I mean, I guess he's slightly better than Brassois, who's an 80. I still feel like, you know, putting him down to 84, though, is a bit harsh. I'll take a look here at the AHL team as well, just to see how those guys are doing. Uh, so more there's got 50. It seems like AHL scoring is always a lot lower. Dalakal, minus 24. That's kind of nuts. Uh, but Tan there, so really... Sides from more, I mean, I, yeah, I don't know why. Just AHL scoring is never great. Bodwin, though, 41 points. I think that's pretty good. Clark there, 40. Could maybe win AHL Rookie of the Year because 40 for a defenseman, I feel, you know, a lot more impressive than, say, whatever forward in, uh, whatever rookie forward in the AHL is going to have. Take a look here as well. Who led the entire league in scoring? McKinnon, 116. Ranton, 111. I mean, yeah, they're just going to go off on Colorado. Tarasenko, 107. Sagan, 106. Dreisau there, 96. Ovi, 52 goals, Sagan though 55, Drew 95, McDavid 94, Hall 94. Forgot to mention, he stayed on Talis, so Dallas is stacked first line. Hall, Sagan, either Ben, Radulov, doesn't matter. That's just such a sick combo. And next year, you guys want to check the standings. We know we won the division. I feel like we're probably third though in the NHL. And second, actually. Colorado is just that good. 115 points, geez. And we had second with 102, actually tied with Dallas. So um, Colorado, I think, made it to the Western Conference Final last year. Then Calgary beat them out. Um, it's gonna be very interesting to see, you know, who makes it. Oh my god Anaheim 21st in the league makes it in the playoffs 85 points I was gonna say I think some people aren't like decided yet because I saw there's only 13 there and that was why 14 15 16 didn't have X's yet, but Anaheim gets in and Calgary Okay, so one team hasn't been decided yet, but that is that is a joke Calgary is the 22nd best team 84 points they almost have a negative record. They make the playoffs. And they made the Stanley Cup final last year as well. But Anaheim, Calgary, I would be so pissed. Um, I'm trying to think. Like, Minnesota, at least in the same conference. So I'd be the most pissed if I'm them 90 points. Even, you know, Pittsburgh Islanders. One of those teams will get in. But 
wow, the West has just gone way downhill. And last in the league's LA. So I can't believe that. And before we get to the playoffs, guys, there's actually one thing I want to show you before I forget. When I was looking around at all the teams for someone to trade for, I noticed that Nick Ritchie on the Ducks is making 10.2 million as an 86 overall winger. Like, that's gotta be the biggest overpayment I've seen yet. Now, having said that, he's actually playing really good hockey, as you can see here. Um, what do you finish with? 68 points this year. Not quite 10.2 million worth, but not too bad. And the year before, he actually had the same amount of points as Duran. So, not as bad an overpayment as I thought, but still 10.2 million for Nick Ritchie. Like, that his agent deserves a raise because that is insane. But I'll get started with the playoffs here. I feel like we should be playing the Senators because we won the division. And obviously, second in the NHL. So, Senators, I like that first round matchup. Don't want to get too cocky or anything, but uh, it's only been a couple years, you know, since they were. The worst team in the NHL, so uh, we'll see what their lineup is looking like here. Kachuk on the first line, playing with Pajot Duclair, so not too bad. Brown, White, Pugliarvi, I forgot actually we traded him to them, and he's gone down in rating. Amrob, Tierney, Rossi, who's an 86, what? Rossi got drafted 2020, so he's grown for, I guess this is two seasons, already an 86. I actually predicted uh, the Senators to take Rossi, and if he goes an 86, he's worth it. How do you not play elite potential guy on the first line, though, like, I feel like they're almost wasting him there on the third line. His role's first line forward, so that makes no sense. Uh, Shabbat's a 90. They got Barry as well. Zaitsev, Branstrom. Okay, so yeah, they've definitely gotten a lot better over the past couple years. Okay, goaltending though. Crawford, 82. Grace, 81. Um, even with Price, 84. I feel like we definitely have a goaltending advantage, and we have a lot more depth on forward, so I feel like every single line you know, has the chance to put one past uh, either Crawford or Grice here. So hopefully we can get by Ottawa. So I think this is probably like the closest series we could have. Ottawa is not far from Montreal at all. Like these guys are driving each other's games. So here we go. First game of the playoffs in Montreal against the Senators. Let's see what happens here. The two teams I think that are both bilingual in the NHL. First period, nothing happens. Second period, Barry Thomas, 1-1. And 4-2 win. There you go. Gallagher, Paling, Houdon, Pajot for them. So always like to win that first game. Good to see that. Actually, too, I'm wondering. AHL team. I don't think the uh, regular season's finished yet. And it has not, but it looks like, unfortunately, we're not making the playoffs. So um, that kind of sucks, but obviously, AHL playoffs is sort of just a second thought if you're not in the NHL playoffs. Not really too concerned with that as long as your, your players are growing. So game number two here, you know, still in Montreal. Hopefully, you can pull this out. First period. And they get two there. Tierney, Branstrom, all right. We're doubling them in shots, though. So come on, boys. And we get one Caulfield. Let's go. One more. Oh, wow, we got two more there, Murray and Tatar, but they also got two, Zaitsev like Kachuk. So, close game there, losing by one. I feel like if this was an actual series, the uh, Ottawa Arena would probably be filled with half Montreal fans, if not more, especially for a playoff game. Like, they would just be showing up like crazy. Because, again, I think it's only an hour, maybe two, maybe even less than that from Montreal to Ottawa. So, game three in Ottawa, nothing in the first. Uh, Pajot in the second, come on. Wow, and uh, oh, Gallagher gets one, but they also got one from Tierney. I was going to say, I saw they had two. Uh, so we did try and make it close there. I think we tied it up, but unfortunately, couldn't win it. I don't know. We're Stanley Cup, uh, the, I don't know. We're the defending Stanley Cup champions here. I feel like on paper, our team's ate a lot better than Ottawa. we got to find a way to somehow win this. So game four, we cannot go down 3-1. we got to tie this thing up. Nothing in the first. Big second period, we get two. Um, Houdon and Paling, Zeiss have Kachuk for them. Are you kidding me? Connor Brown, only goal in the third. All right, so not like in the spot we're in, but we've been here before, back against the wall. We were able to pull it out. And look at that, too. I just realized Calgary, Anaheim, not only do they both squeak in the playoffs as the 21st and 22nd seed, but because they're the two teams in the Pacific that made it, aside from the tight division winner who's playing a wildcard team, they get to play each other. So a team that shouldn't even been in the playoffs is guaranteed semifinals. That sort of happened to a lesser extent. I know the one year, Vancouver, Calgary, I think they finished like, 17th 18th in the league but 21st 22nd that's just a joke all right here we go game five lekin gets one let's go let's keep scoring gallagher gets one rossi amrock for them we need a big third period here our back-to-back -back stanley cup hopes are finished see what happens and there we go gallagher actually gets two did he have one as well in the second gallagher got a hat trick so put the team on his back here in the game number five love to see that again you know gallagher heart and soul of this team uh, definitely a guy, just on principle, I don't think I'll ever trade away. He's just a guy you gotta have on that team. So, game six here in Ottawa. I feel like we got a little bit of momentum. If we win this one, I like our chances heading home Montreal game seven. Big first period. Uh, Gallagher keeps it going. Tatar as well. So we're tied 2 2. And Zaitsev gets one. So, out shooting us 29 to 15. We just gotta get one here though. Force OT. 
I believe in the boys on this team. Come on. Wow, we do. Thomas gets one. Amar for them. Barzell for us. 4-4. Four, four, OT. We need a hero. Let's go. <sighs> Eric Brandstrom. Are you kidding me? I mean, we made an effort. Pushed it to game six OT. But, I mean, when you go down 3-1 early like that, I guess it wasn't meant to be. I thought we had a very good team this year. Better than last year, but... It's tough to win the playoffs in these sims. And look at this, guys. The Tampa Bay have fired their head coach. I feel like that makes sense. On paper, they're such a sick team. How they're last in the division, I don't know. Um, also, as you can see there, Toronto Maple Leafs win the Stanley Cup. And the Grand Rapids Griffins actually won the Calder Cup. So, uh, good for the Maple Leafs. I mean, that's kind of crazy. You know, Montreal one year, Maple Leafs the next year. Washington, wow. That isn't fair. Jumping from 13 to 1st to get Shane Wright. I feel like there would be riots if this happened. Ovechkin's still on the team, but like, you know, the new like franchise player, that's just not fair. Sharks there too, Edmonton uh, picking three. That's why I feel like the current system, it's just, if that happened, that's way worse than a team who tanked and is clearly terrible getting first. I feel like a team who just had an off year, getting, like that's just so much worse. Because of that, we actually moved from 12 to 13 to Arizona pick, of course. We had a chance to, you know, get Shane Wright. That would have been so sick, like... As I say that, I'm saying how sick it would have been, but at least we traded for that pick. I don't know. Gallagher had a good playoff, eight points in six games, unfortunately. Uh, just was not enough. Again, I think we just got really unlucky there in the first round, but we'll take a look at the playoff tree here. So, um, Ottawa, wow. Ottawa actually went on to beat the Bruins in seven after beating us, and then they lost to Toronto in six. Toronto beats uh, Blackhawks there in five, so they like a final. Surprised to see Blackhawks already back and at it. Um, Calgary there beat Ducks in six, then lost to Blackhawks in six. Again, just not deserving at all. And then Blackhawks there beat the Stars in seven. Of course, we know Stars had a pretty stacked team. So we'll check the awards here. I feel like we have a chance for the NHL and AHL Rookie of the Year awards, which would be pretty cool. Um, all the team awards there. Individual, McKinnon gets throughout Ross, as well as the Hearts, and that's back-to-back -back years. So McKinnon is taking over the NHL right now in our sim. Um, James Norris goes to McCarr. That's pretty cool. Lady Bing goes to McKinnon. So again, it's just all Colorado. Caulfield does get the Calder. That's awesome. I thought he had a very good chance at it. I love getting the Calder. I'm not sure why. Just one of the cooler awards to win. Matthews gone Smythe. I definitely could see that. Bishop there got the Vezina. That's actually really impressive because I saw he's actually gone down in rating. Similar to Price. I think he's like an 84 now, but it's a lot of Vezina worthy season, so good for him. Uh, Bobrovsky, though, got the William Jennings. Ferraro there gets the Bill Masterton. Ottawa coach gets Jack Adams. I feel like that makes sense uh, considering where they were. Barkov, Selkie, McKinnon, Ted Lindsay. And then Sagan there and Reese Richard. So, uh, pretty good year all in all, even though we were a first round exit. AHL here, Griffins won the Calder Cup. Of course, we didn't make the playoffs. We're not going to have a team award. Individual AHL awards here. Uh, Beret Belay gets the most points, as well as the MVP. Uh, Kravchenko, most goals. Okay, I thought that was rookie. So, maybe maybe we can have rookie of the year. Valino, outstanding rookie. How is Valino a rookie in 2122? He's a rookie right now in 1920. Or I guess he probably went back to juniors for two years. He's probably like an 82 rookie or something. That's a joke. Hickett's their best D-man, so that's how Griffins won. Reimer was their goalie. He also got the MVP of the playoffs. Uh, Bray Belay, sportsmanship. I hope I'm saying his name right. I think I am. Bowmies are there. Uh, community involvement. Good to see that. And then Reimer also had lowest goals again. So Griffins there just with a stacked AHL team. But we'll get to the draft now. Even though we were first round exit, I'm still very optimistic about this team's future. We have our first overall pick who's been in the AHL, who I think, you know, should be up in the NHL next year, making plays again. Are you kidding me? Shane right there. Um, but looking through here, some great players. I wouldn't mind, you know, trying to trade up, get a top three pick. Going to be tough, though, I feel. I will see if there's any steals potentially waiting for us. Does not really look like it. You know, there's the top six players there, the top six. This guy's 50-50 medium elite, and our scouts like him. Could probably use a second round pick on him. Other than that, though... Really not seeing a whole lot here. Oh my god, look at this, guys. Was not expecting that. Shea Weber calls it quits. 36 years old, so he's not even that old. He just had, like, some of the best seasons of his career. He had, what was it, 67 points this year. The year before, he had 75 when we won the Cup. Like, those are his two best years ever. His two best years ever, all the way back to, like, the beginning of his career. Calls it quits. Now... So it's good and bad. The good thing is, of course, we get out from his contract. He was going to be making 7.8 for the next five years. Um, him retiring right now in real life would actually completely screw over the National Predators. I don't think it's actually going to happen in game, though. The bad thing, of course, we lose an ace and overall defenseman. But I think with 7.8 million, we can probably sign one in free agency. Honestly, was not expecting him to retire at all. Uh, Palmville there as well. Dustin Bufflin. 
Andrew Ladd, Fanuff, who's actually on the Sharks. Uh, Nielsen retires. That's good for the Red Wings. I'm assuming he still had time on his contract. Or no, it's actually up. Uh, Cogliano, Horton. Take a look here at goalies as well. And no one really retires. So that's pretty crazy. I did not expect to be losing Weber at all. But again, we have that first overall pick in the AHL. It's his time to shine. He's going to get a lot of ice time here and, you know, hopefully uses it well. All right, guys, the Washington Capitals' first overall pick is actually on the block and doesn't even have the max value. Like, I think it had less value than last year's pick, even though Wright's a franchise player as well. Offer them to Tar here with two first-round picks. I didn't realize Arizona's pick is not, like, the 13th pick or whatever. It's 24. I think Arizona traded with someone else to get that first-round pick that ended up being that. I just completely misread the lottery. So, two firsts to Tar. I doubt they say yes. We might as well give it a shot. Trades rejected. Um, I mean, Shane Wright. Like, what's crazy is the first overall right now cuts on the block, and the second and third are not. Probably easier to get um, than second and third overall. Uh, is it three first-round picks? Shane Wright, is he worth three first-round picks? Probably. Honestly, like, he's so good. You guys saw Detroit. He gets, like, a 95. I mean, the two Arizona picks we got for free from Max Domi. So this is essentially Tatar, Domi, and a first-round pick for Shane Wright. I think that's a good trade. We'll see what they say. Trade rejected still. All right. I don't know. We'd have to give up like Barzell or Caulfield or the defenseman to get him otherwise. And like, it's probably not worth it at that point. I feel like Barzell is already a 90. Good contract. Caulfield is literally going to be the best goal scorer in this game. Clark there is already an 84. So yeah, he should take over for Weber just fine. I also noticed that Price actually bounced back in rating now an 85. So Maybe we hold on to him. His value's actually gone up a bit. I think before it was like a little before the T. Uh, Primo there is a 79. If he grows a bit, he could even be the backup. So we're not going to get Shane Wright. Um, I feel like both, you know, second and third here are going to be too much to trade for. Especially since they're on the block. Unfortunately, I just don't think we can get one of these picks. And look at that. Shane Wright, 85 overall, medium franchise out of the draft. That's just insane. Savoy. 81. Unfortunately, I think we're just going to miss that on the top three picks here. Look at that. Lambert's also an 81 overall with high lead, so pretty nasty uh, top three in this draft. But our scouts actually said how 2022 wasn't a great draft, and I was wondering, like, what are they saying? Look at the top three picks, but uh, there's actually not a lot of depth here, so we'll try and, you know, make a couple nice picks, but honestly, you might be trading away a lot of them for next season. And like I was saying, guys, our pick here is number 24. Blunden's guaranteed medium elite. This guy, probably a low elite. Ah, uh, don't really like that. Um, another guaranteed medium top six. He's a gem. Maroon. Okay, I think that's the way to go. He, yeah, he's the only gem. Guaranteed medium top six. Everybody else is a 50-50 medium elite. I feel like you gotta go with the guaranteed. He's hopefully a higher rated guy, which would be awesome. 66, medium elite. Or, sorry, 66, medium top six. Um, I mean, we definitely could have had a worse pick. It's not amazing, but I'll take it. And I just pick your guys number 10 in the second round. Just curious if, like anyone really could get taken after our pick low elite there 75 punas that's actually pretty good uh i would say he's a better pick same with this guy 76 medium top four boostness so i mean i don't know our scouts i don't know what we're paying them for there's a couple of guys there that would have been better than our pick but um, hopefully make up for it here second round early second round as well there's actually a lot of guys i was looking at um 50 medium elite this german defense we said we wanted uh, i'm not gonna go back on my word how is he 61 medium top six not great all right guys so right now i'm kind of making a strange trade with buffalo like i was saying all i see in terms of prospects i'm offering them our two second rounders this year for their two second rounders next year and just hopefully you know there's a guy there that's available that we like a lot better than right now i think they should say yes like they want both theirs are on the block all right so there we go i think that should work out better we still have a couple fifths so we can try and find some late round steals but like i said there was just nothing i was seeing we were just gonna be basically you know hoping for the best I'd rather just take another stab at it next year and hopefully our scouts actually find somebody solid that we can pick late in the draft. Um, like these two guys here are still available. I'll go with another German. Hopefully this one's a little bit better. Uh, medium pop six. Okay. I had, I think at least, I think we had one scout in Germany. I think I'm going to fire him because he is not doing great. Um, next pick here, Hendry, 50-50 medium elite. Come on. Bottom six. Oh, this is a rough draft, not gonna lie. Luckily, we got first overall last year. Um, I could probably have honestly had a better chance of just going by like central scouting than actually our scouts. Lunkfist, though, pretty good chance he's a low elite. Let's take him. Please be decent. Low top six. 
end of the sixth round, that's actually like our best pick yet, aside from the first rounder. Next year, guys, we actually have to re-sign our coaches. And so I'm thinking about letting our head coach go. He's A plus overall, but he wants 6.3 million. I mean, those are pretty good stats. Although coach influence, which is kind of like the most important one, it's how much the coach actually affects the players, is the lowest rating there at B. 6.5 million as well for five years, but only leave us with a million dollars to sign the rest of our NHL staff, like associate coach, assistant coach. I don't think we can do it. And our associate coach right now, A minus, uh, only wants 2.3 million. He's actually got really good stats, A plus coach influence, which is kind of insane. Offense and defense, we could definitely grow if we do well. A plus there, power play, penalty kill. B minus teaching is not too bad. I'm thinking we have to let that guy go. The associate coach, give him a shot as the head coach. Um, I'm thinking two-year deal. Give him an extra bit of money there to make him sign a two-year deal. Offer him the head coach role. Hopefully they'll say yes. Um, the assistant coach I think was pretty good. Uh, role. He has, yeah, I guess he would be getting a raise there to associate coach. Um, bring him back. And then the goalie coach. Now I actually gotta check and see what his teaching is. A, we can get like an A plus goalie coach, so I'll actually let him go as well. And it looks like we actually need a couple more AHL coaches too. And I wasn't kidding guys, this Dell scout here, I'm firing him. He's got A plus in the Dell, but I don't know, <laughs> it wasn't that good. And we're at the resign phase here guys, as you can see at the bottom, they have a side caps up to 93 million and we have 60 million in cap space. Would have only had about 9 million, but of course, Webb retired, so with him retiring, defensively, we got a little bit worse, but I'm actually still pretty optimistic, so I'm thinking Murray will probably play on the top pair with Clark. Of course, rookie year, 84 overall, Francis potential. I'm thinking he could win the Calder, maybe win it back to back years. Um, Polak and Fowler probably on the second pair. And then I think Mete, Bodwin on the bottom pair. Bodwin should grow, he had a really good AHL year. Uh, Jared Daniels actually down to an 83, so again, he was just a rental. We're not keeping him. Uh, now looking at forwards, they're pretty much all locked up. Suzuki needs a new contract, definitely gonna give him one. Wants two million there for two years. Eight years, $3 million, 83 overall. I kind of like that. I mean, he could definitely grow to like an 85 if we just play him top six or even just top nine, give him some special teams uh, minutes. This could be an insane value contract and find your it's worth it. Um, Dalcol, 26.79, could be a fourth liner, just good in the AHL. 750K for one year, that's a great contract for us. Uh, as you can see here, actually, luckily went up to an 81, making iron K, so that's kind of nuts. Um, we got a bunch of guys there, but Tan, 27, so we no longer can grow, we'll just let him go. Um, Howard Luck, kind of like a last ditch effort maybe, um, guy in the AHL, Darren Helms down to a 77, definitely letting him go, and then like I was already mentioning with goalies, price up to an 85, Rossois there, 80 overall backup, making 750k, it's too good of a value, Primo definitely going to resign, one year 750k, um, we can only do three years, it doesn't really change, so I'm going to offer him 900k for three years, because he could be like a starting goaltender by that point, just seems like an insane contract, kind of like Suzuki. Ingram, um, he's pretty much done. I'd rather get like a younger goalie to be the AHL backup. And I didn't even realize this, guys, but Bodwin needs a new contract as well. So 22 years old, 78 overall, should grow this summer. 750k there for one year. Two-way deal, max would be three years. Eight years, 1.8. I wasn't even thinking that for Primo. We could have done uh, eight years on a one-way. Honestly... 1.88 years let's try five years there at 1.1 million definitely you know we're trying to we have a different strategy here trying to get some really good value contracts if the player doesn't grow probably not too hard to trade but if they do obviously just insane insane deals so i also made a bunch of offers too on some ahl guys to keep if they were decent um so our h or our assistant coach is now the nhl coach head coach i should say um not entirely thrilled with the role but i accept bro you're the assistant coach what um, all right, let's see here. That's just a scout. All right, so I think all the scouts accepted. Now I want to get to the players. How luck there accepts. Uh, Suzuki rejects. Okay, so we'll have to try and give him a bit better deal. We did try and do one of those, you know, long-term cheap deals. Um, Dalcall decided to resign. Verbeek does as well. Uh, Evans wants to test for agency. That's fine. Uh, Primo there accepts the deal. And again, he's making, I think, 900k for the next three years. So if he grows into a starter over that time, amazing contract. Uh, Bodwin as well rejects the deal, so that's pretty good. Five years, 1.1. He should at least get to like an 80 or something. We don't have to worry about resigning him. It's good value. Uh, Pearson wants to check test free agency. That's fine. Um, AHL guy accepts a bunch of them there. So basically, it's just Suzuki we got to resign. I think we can probably get, you know, still a long term deal done with him. All right, guys, I'm going to try 2.5 here for six years on Suzuki. We'll do 2.55. He's asking for 2.7. I feel like. 
should be close enough. And there we go, Suzuki does accept his contract offer, so I think that's an awesome contract. It means we should have about 14 million, I think, now in cap space. We get to free agency here, I'm very excited to see who's available. We're actually gonna have a ton of money to spend uh, for the first time since the first year, but that time didn't really count since we ended up not using it. Um, let's see, so a couple scouts, a couple of coaches not bringing back, but hopefully we can find a couple better ones. Again, we have 14 million. There's somebody awesome available. We can go after them. Sam Reinhardt, that's that's kind of nuts. 88 overall, 26 years old, 9.9 .9 though. Uh, brain points and RFA still, 9.5, 26 years old. And he wants a 9.5 million. Dadnov there we could bring back. Um, Nietzsche, I hope I say his name right. I was calling him Nikas. Somebody said it's Nietzsche, someone else said it's something else. Let me know in the comments for sure what it's supposed to be. Uh, Kadri there, $8 million for an 85. Pugliarvi's up to an 86, so he dropped then Rosen rating. Uh, Malkin there, top nine, not touching that because he's going to keep dropping from 85. Giordano wants 6 million. No way. Saad Gusev. I don't see Subban here, so either he re signed with Calgary or they traded him to another team and they signed him. I think, though, I never saw him get traded, so I think he's re signing Calgary. Goaltender wise here, Demko, 86 overall, elite potential UFA. I mean, I guess he only has one year left to grow, but could be the future for our goaltending situation. Split games with Price for like this year. If we can't trade Price. I am heavily, heavily considering getting Demko. Although stats there aren't the greatest. How is he like higher rating than Price? He's putting up worse stats. Like ugh. he went, he went from 82 and 86. I know he's got elite potential. But he's putting up worse numbers. Ugh, that doesn't make any sense. Oh my God! Look at this. I wanted to check on two A goalies get an AHL backup. Andreoff here, 20 years old, semi overall, medium elite potential. I somehow slipped through the cracks. Obviously, make him the max offer there. Um. We could actually give him a one-way. Uh, I'm gonna do him a one-way. Or no, it still doesn't let us do more than 925k because he's a rookie, okay? So, I don't think, should we do the one-way anyways? Or I don't know, I'll just do two-way two deal, three years, 925k. We don't have an AHL backup, so we shouldn't have to worry about like him saying too many players like me or not enough ice time. Usually I think too, like the tiebreaker, you always get the tiebreaker, so. Hopefully he says yes to us. That would just be absolutely insane. Svitov here, 1960 medium starter. Um, I'll take him for free as well. Thank you. Just that'd be great. Get those two goalies. Uh, we'll check players as well because like those are two insane goalies. We we'll actually only have about four roster spots left, but should be okay. Um, 2578 for Sorella. I mean, maybe I'll go get him. We're looking at the rest here. Don't really see anyone worth signing. Also, you guys know Bergeron's a free agent. Still has insane defensive stats. Really good hands. Solid shot. It's just his skating and physical have gone way down. I feel like I'm not going to go after him unless we really need to. Um, Hurdle here as well. 85 overall. Wants 5.4. Like, we could have traded for him. And then you go up here. Down on 86. Wants 9.2. So, $4 million more for one overall. And Hurdle's, what, 28? Down on 33. Sometimes I really understand. I sometimes don't really understand the player ass. Um, hopefully Hurdle's still there if we go after Reinhardt and don't get him, because I think you know Hurdle would be a nice addition to that forward group. Reinhardt, I feel like 88, 10 million dollars. It's quite a bit. Last year though, he had 83 points, which is pretty solid. Insane hands, good shot. Not the fastest. Good defensively. Faceoffs, he probably has more winger, only 75. And also, his potential has gone down from medium lead to medium top six. Uh, just a curiosity though, what would it cost us in terms of picks or point? We don't have the picks, kind of figured that'd be the case. So you know what guys, I'm thinking what the heck, might as well go after the big fish, Sam Reinhardt. I'm thinking I'm going to offer him 10.25, just because I want him, but I don't like super want him, if that makes sense. So if we get him for that, we do. I'm not really willing to pay more. If we don't, I'm going to go after Hurdle for sure. Also, I think we can still get Demko. We have 14.7, but you actually have like 2 million more than that, because when you sign a guy... You're basically taking over for a spot that they have filled in by a cheap guy that's making a million. So Demko, our future starter, we can try and trade price if we can't, whatever. I'll give him uh, one point or 6.55 there for one year. Another team that's sure right now. That might be a bit too cheap, but I also want to make sure that he doesn't just save it on the cap space. And we lose that on him for that reason, so kind of have to play it a little bit safe. We'll see what happens here, especially to that elite goalie that's in the AHL would be awesome. And Svitov accepts our offer. I'm hoping he's the elite goalie. I forget the names of the two. I think he might be the starter. So hopefully the other one also accepts. Are you kidding me? 
Andreoff, I'm pretty sure was the elite guy. Appreciate your interest. I appreciate your interest, but decided to go with another team at this time. Looking for a team that has looking for a team that has a better mix of players where I'm from. What do you what do you mean, man? I'm wondering if like us signing that starter goalie ruined us here, but I don't think so, because he would have said something like there's too many players, um, similar skill set or whatever, and that's not what he said. I'm pretty sure Andreoff was the elite goalie. Fowler for two first round picks. Wow. Oh, that's almost too good to pass up. Like Florida's not that good, or the contender, but Fowler's 84. Oh man, 84 making 6.5 is not the terrible deal. We get two first round picks. Although without him, our defense, it's pretty weak. And I mean, really weak by that. But we could use that money to get somebody decent in free agency. Oh wow, two first rounders. Now I see that they're also interested in Thomas Tatar, 84 overall, currently making 5.2 million, which is an okay contract for an 84, but he was playing third line for us, so I wouldn't mind actually moving on from him. So maybe instead, um, this doesn't really look too close, but um, I'll offer this, and if not, take off the third and the seventh and just trade Tatar for first rounder, one for one. Yeah, trade rejected, okay. Not even close, whatever. Uh, the target for it first, I wouldn't mind just moving on from this contract. I feel like we have enough forward depth. Let's see what they say. And there we go. Okay, so I'm glad uh, I decided to check the target. If we trade Fowler, our defense is looking really weak, whereas forward, we definitely have the depth. Um, Paling can just play third line instead for Tatar. And then the fourth line, obviously, not too big of a deal. So we hear back from Reinhardt does accept. That's awesome. Demko does not, didn't offer him enough money. Goes with the Flames as well, so he's jo joining Subban. But I mean, we got the number one free agent. We can't be upset. That just means Price playing more games. You know, hopefully he can slowly, you know, gain that rating back. Danov's there, Palat, Bergeron. We have 9.7 million. I mean, Bergeron in a one year, just to be like the ultimate fourth line center, might not be the worst deal ever. Um, Pavelski even actually could do that as well, a bit cheaper. Still has a bit of speed, but his defensive stats are nowhere near as good. His hands are better uh, compared to Bergeron there. Could also bring Kovalchuk back, who's actually up to an 84. 39 years old, he had 28 goals last year. And his shot's still insane. Pretty good hands too, he won a cup with us. Uh, that might not be, that might not be terrible. All right guys, so I feel like we have to bring Kovalchuk back just for the culture, I mean, we want to stand like up with him. One year there, 3.5, should get it done. Uh, he does have top nine potential, so he could go down, but the shots would stay the same. Also too, I was thinking maybe we could get Getzla 3.3, but he's got top nine potential and He's going to keep getting slower and slower, already at 80 speed. Does have 90 hands still, but I'm thinking we'd have the money. Also, I think it'd kind of be hilarious. Why not get Patrice Bergeron in a Montreal Canadiens sweater? 5.5. Um, definitely only going to sign him for one year, though, because I'm too worried otherwise. Um, we have the money. 5.75. Again, best, him or O'Reilly is the best two-way center in the game. We put him in our bottom six. Kovalchuk has a sniper on one wing. I mean, that's just so sick. And look at this. Tampa Bay just offered us two first rounders. Alan Feltz, who's a medium starter goalie from Murray, a third and a fourth. Now, again, I don't really want to trade defense, but if we do get Bergeron and Kovalchuk, we'll actually have an extra forward, um, and a, like an 80 plus forward. I'm sure Lekkinen, they don't want, he's like an 81 or whatever, but maybe there's somebody that has like a decent amount of value, like know we could trade, Paling there. Um, Deneau is making $4 million for one more year. Lindholm, 4.8 for two. Uh, I guess, like, Kovalchuk could kind of take in, come in and take over for Lindholm. How did he do last year? He had 60 points. So, like, not too bad. Um, again, though, Kovalchuk kind of does that. No way better defensive stats. So, I guess, just face-offs, really. One better defense awareness, a bit better face-offs. One year left at 4.1. He'll probably want to raise. I feel like we could put Bergeron third line center, Paling fourth line center. So... Maybe we move on from Deneau here instead of Murray. If this gets, if Deneau in third and fourth gets two firsts and Allenfelt, we're laughing. We'll see what they say. Trade rejected. Let's just do the two firsts. Like, this would be nuts. Trades accepted. Deneau for two first round picks. I mean, he's a good player and everything, but we are, I think we're going to have a competitive team and we're stacking up for the future. Gallagher and Fowler are on the block for some reason. 13 million now in cap space, obviously building around Clark, Barzell, Caulfield, Reinhardt's in the mix, same with Durant, and then draft picks. Three first round picks in 2023, three seconds as well, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh, and then even 2024, we have two first rounders. 
looking pretty good uh, in terms of the future. And look at that, guys. Bergeron does sign the Montreal Canadiens, something I feel would never happen. And Kovalchuk is coming back to the team as well. So I'm pretty optimistic for this season. I feel like we've got a good team here. And team status is contender still, so we have a chance. And look at this. Florida gets their defenseman. Calvin DeHaan from the Arizona Coyotes with a fourth round pick for Hepo Niemi and Rubinsky. It seems like a pretty expensive price to pay. Um, but I guess they really need a defenseman. And I'm saying the captaincy right now, guys. Obviously lost our captain and Weber as well as one of the alternates in Subban. So Barzell and Duran here are two new alternates. And the heart and soul of this team, Gallagher, I gave the C to. I feel like within the next year or two, I'll probably give the A to Clark. But he's a rookie, so I feel like can't do that right now. And we're now at the beginning of the season here, guys. As you can see in the top right, September 13th. Kind of funny. The assistant GM put all three of our first round picks in 2023 on the block. I want to see what we can get, I guess. But... As you know, price went up from an 84 to an 85 after the playoffs. So I was, you know, had high hopes for him, even though we didn't get Demko. They were just playing with my emotions. After that, he then drops by two over the summer to an 83. How did he fall over the summer? I don't know. How did he go up in the playoffs? We went first round exit. It makes no sense to me. Look at the trade value. Less than the Brassoir, maybe the same. 35 years old, 83 overall, making 10.5 or four years. I don't know what we do with that. Like, I think we have to start him and just hope he plays really well because if a goalie has an awesome season, he can jump back up. And I think that's literally our only option. If we buy him out, I think it'll be 3.5 for six years now opposed to eight, which isn't as bad. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, like, they're just so unfortunate. But uh, next year, I actually want to show you guys the lines. I'm pretty optimistic with how this team's going to uh, turn out. Team stats are hopeful. I thought we were a contender, honestly, but um, I guess we're hopeful. I don't mind that, though. I still think we're really solid. So forward group here we still have Duran, Barzell, Caulfield that first line I think it's deadly uh Reinhardt there playing with Thomas and Lindholm on the second Lindholm I didn't even realize actually has 83 faceoffs, so I might move him to center Gallagher, Palin, and Suzuki on the third line then we got Kovalchuk, Bergeron, and Lekkinen on the fourth line honestly Bergeron even though he's an 83 he just to be a PK specialist for us look at the defensive stats there 94 faceoffs. like we're just starting out there to win faceoffs and be a PK guy Kovalchuk's on the fourth line we just have him up for his shot basically Ripping them from the point, kind of like Ovi on the power play. Uh, defensively here, Clark's an 86 now. Paired up with Polak on the top pair. Uh, Fowler Murray on the second. Mete Bodwin on the third. Bodwin's down 80. All three there are getting plus one. So special teams, like I was saying, um, first unit actually gets plus three. So hopefully these guys go off. Um, Kovalchuk's got the shot. Clark, I'm hoping, you know, big things for him. Call their trophy. Uh, Four-man power play there. Uh, Kovalchuk's also on that. Uh, penalty kill, you can see Bergeron there. He's also on the three-man. So I feel like in terms of ice time, it should all be pretty spread out there. As we have special team specialists on the fourth line, the rest of the guys should all be getting their fair share. Um, AHL team here, you can see more Howard Luck, Dalcall. He's actually an 80 now, 26 years old, so you can maybe call him up to the NHL if we make a trade or whatever. Yolanin's a 77. People were saying he gets really good. Look at his stats. Look at the shot. One and a half stars. The rest of them are fine. I don't know what's wrong with the shot there. Um, Houdon's even in the AHL right now. So the AHL team, like 75 plus for the forwards. Defensively, not too great, but uh, you never know. Lorenz here, 67 low elite. I'm hoping he grows playing on the top pair. It worked out chemistry-wise. And then Primo is actually an 80 now, so if we somehow are able to get rid of Price, I know you guys are going to say try and trade him, but it's going to be tough. Maybe we could just rock you know, him and Brossois, two low-rated goalies. Kind of worked out for Columbus so far. Corpus Salah, Murs looking. Uh, Sutov there, the starter we signed, is the backup. So again, I feel like pretty optimistic about this year and again to the future is pretty sad like we have three first round picks three second round picks lots of options for sure so in the comment section let me know what you guys think i should do in terms of trades or whatever but that's gonna be it guys for this episode hopefully enjoyed it if you did leave a thumbs up hashtag yet please do that and as always guys thanks so much for watching have a nice day goodbye